Howdy y'all, it's Mike, and welcome back to another vlog. I just got back from a pretty heavy day working with folks in my cohort, and during that time, someone asked me to speak to an undergraduate who's thinking about the master's program that I'm currently in. So right now I'm, I'm in the mood to answer questions, uh, particularly about master's programs. But along those lines, I thought I'd take this opportunity to document some of the thoughts I've been having and go through a little bit about the program selection process. Now, for a lot of my life, and I'll be using myself as an example throughout this, graduate school is just this big, monolithic thing. Kind of amorphous, you know, it happens after undergrad. But one of the important distinctions when you're thinking about graduate school is to think about whether or not you want a master's or a PhD. And there is a big difference between the two. Now, I can't tell you whether or not you would want a master's or PhD. That decision is up to you. But one piece of advice I would give you is that it's going to be really guided by what you want to do after school. In my case, the decision I was choosing between was going for my current program, which is a master's of engineering in space systems, or a PhD in astrophysics. And it was tough because I really like both those things. Uh, but the decision I finally came to was that I wanted to go build cool stuff. Um, and to do that at the level I wanted, I really needed a master's uh, because it would get me to where I needed to be to do the things I wanted to do the most quickly. In your case, to parse between which one you might want, there's a couple of resources I'll send you to. If you have an academic advisor, a boss in the industry you'd like to go into, ask them. They should have information on the kind of degree you would need to get to where you'd like to be. Another good resource, if you're wanting to work in the US, is the Bureau of Labor Statistics. They keep a lot of data. I mean, a lot of data. <laughs> About uh, jobs, minimum degree levels, most things you would want to know about various different jobs. And while some of the descriptions may be pretty generic, as is the nature of polling, it can still be a pretty good tool to figure out uh, the trends for the industry that you'd like to be in. Before I give you my second piece of advice, let's go through a thought exercise. I'd like you to think about your undergraduate and what you liked and didn't like about it. After giving you a moment, what I think I liked, and your answer might be a little bit different than mine, but after talking to a couple people, this is kind of a consensus I, I've come to, is that the people in your program, the general vibe of your program, and your advisor are gonna play a massive role in whether you like the graduate program that you're gonna go to. Now, based off this thought exercise, my <laughs> advice is gonna be, make sure your advisor is right for you. This is a little bit different from the advice that you're given when looking for an undergrad, which is to decide on the program. And don't get me wrong, the program itself is important, but you'll find that in your desired field, you're gonna find a couple of schools that fit those criteria. So to further downselect from that group, an advisor is a pretty important thing because you're gonna be working closely with them for the duration of your entire graduate degree. So having someone that you feel comfortable with and you feel is empowering you to do a good job in your degree, your research, whatever is necessary to fulfill the requirements of your program, the better person you find, the better time you're gonna have. The next piece of advice after this is make sure the program that you wanna get into 
is the kind of environment you'd like to be in. Because it sucks to think you're going to start a really big next chapter of your life, are excited, but there's something about your program, your department, the people in it that really rubs you the wrong way. And now you've made a financial and time commitment to work with them. <laughs> uh, and if you can visit beforehand, talk to current students, talk to your advisor about the culture and environment of your department or college, the better. The more, the more information you have while making the selection, the better time you're gonna have. Now my last tip is almost, almost an emotional housekeeping kind of tip, but it is also very practical in and of itself. And that's to take inventory of your level of comfort being away from your support systems. Grad school may entail moving away from home for the first time. You might, you might have been away from home in undergrad, but some people go to undergrad in their hometown or get a job out of high school or college and when they're starting to consider graduate school, their best option might be far away from home. Uh, in my case, I kind of straddled this line. I grew up the youngest of, a, of an Irish family, so I have a very strong family dynamic. But Michigan is about seven hours from home for me. There is a trade-off that you have to be comfortable with. I still go home and see my family, uh, and that was one of my requirements. Other people might not, I shouldn't say might not care as much, that sounds emotionless, uh, but other, <laughs> other people might be more comfortable being further away from home. And again, that's all personal preference. Aside from that, I really don't have any more tips. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll, I'll be happy to answer them. But aside from that, I hope you have a nice day and I'll see you in the next vlog.